Welcome to It's All Fine and Dangy, where we talk about community, health, culture, and all of the big and little things that make life good. Here are your hosts, Dan and Angie. Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode 96 of the It's All Fine and Dangy podcast. We are so happy that you are able to listen in tonight, and we have a guest in the studio tonight, and I'm very excited for that. You are. You, I'm always excited. This is like the second <laughs> guest that we've had in the past, what, three months? And it's yes, like I get excited. We start to see like a pinhole in normality coming. <laughs> It's coming, it's coming. So what is really cool about the guest joining us, sitting right across from us this evening, is I've um, known him since high school. Wow. Go Hurricanes. Woohoo! Uh, we graduated together in 1994. How about that? Aging myself, oh, aren't I? And Man. me, too. And you. Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> you're aging me. 94 was well after I graduated. I so. know, you're way older than uh, me. Whatever. You're way older okay. than me. And... Um, what I think is really cool is when you you see somebody so talented that you went to school with, and then years later they are actually still doing that same thing. For, for you as knew a that they were going to do it. I agree. So cool. So thank you for joining us, Jeff Whitfield. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for actually coming to the studio. It is a pleasure to be here. Thank I you. I mean, we were going to do this virtually. But we had a few kinks. That happens sometimes. I'm pretty sure that was my fault. But I'm glad it happened. <laughs> totally okay. And you know what I've learned? I've learned, I, 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 well, I should say I should have learned is, you know, I'll tell Angie, let's do, just make sure we have headphones and a mic and we're good. But I don't ever say you need this much bandwidth. Or, and it's not the first time we've had interviews where you, yeah, somebody's cutting out. It's cutting yeah. out or whatever. I'm like, oh, I forgot to tell them. So don't worry about it. Hey. Totally, totally should have given you the specs on that. Tech happens. It's all good. I'm happy to be here. Yes, yeah. tech does happen. It's so much nicer to chat in person anyway. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah. So I said that you're very talented, but I didn't oh, say boy. what it is that you do. Um, so you are a musician. And um, But before we get into talking about you as a musician, tell us a little bit just about yourself. Personal, whatever you'd like to share. Sure. I... Uh, as you say, I'm from Mount Dora, Florida. Um, I live in Mount Plymouth now with uh, my wife and uh, my children. Um, and uh, I'm a full-time musician. That's what I do. Uh, it's amazing. I've been doing it since I was 17 years old. And outside of uh, doing some supplementary construction work here and there, it's mm -hmm. pretty much what I've done uh, all amazing. my life. So it's been, uh, it's been quite a ride. That is really cool. So I remember... In high school, um, you and Rob Gore, and I don't remember everybody else that was there, but you guys did a talent show or something, and you played Hotel California. Yeah, yeah. Me, and it Robbie was Gore. amazing. It was a great song. Me, Robbie Gore, and Sean Saxon was the third in that. Sean Saxon, in that, yes. Uh, in that group. Yes. Um, yep, yep. I remember that. We rehearsed for weeks. Yeah, there was uh, to get that. To it get that was too. that's a heck really of a song. Good. You know what? And that that's and funny. And then just, when I told you about it the other day, yeah. I couldn't stop freaking singing the song. That's because I played it. You know what? I, you probably know this, Jeff. But that song is like the no matter what kind of music you listen to, that particular song is like the test for audio. Like if you get a new high quality speaker, because of all the range in the song, Absolutely. it's an excellent song for Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So I still play that song to this day, yeah. and I keep it up my sleeve like an ace like yeah. if you know if I'm at a gig and I feel like I'm starting to lose the crowd for a minute or yeah. something like that I'm like okay well it's time to play Hotel That's, California that brings yeah. everybody back doesn't <laughs> everybody, it everybody yeah, comes it's a right uni back. universal yeah. right Absolutely. like everybody knows that song yeah. and it's it's just it seems like every it's you know, a good we, one. we heard a we heard like a reggae version of that song at the wing place the other yeah. night so it's like they've got it morphed into everything now it was actually pretty good I I will say that a great song, you can pretty much do it in any way that you want, and it'll still be a great song. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear you. And that's so, a great song. Angie said you did the talent show back when you were 17. When did yeah. you first discover your love of music, really? Uh, Beyond just listening to the radio like we all do. Sure. I was, uh, I was about 13. I had just turned 13, and uh, I asked for a guitar. And uh, I had been fooling around on my, friend, my friend's guitar a little mm -hmm. bit. Right. And my mom was like, I'm not buying you a guitar. I was like, I can play a little bit. And she was like, well, come to the music store. If you can play a little bit, I'll buy you a guitar. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So we went there and, uh, you know, I played the three chords I know. But she was like, well, you know something. So here, have this guitar. 
So, uh, and my mom was a piano player and a gospel singer. So okay. we had a piano at the house and she was always singing. Um, so I started, you know, messing around with the guitar and messing around with the piano and it all just kind of went from there. Once, once you kind of get hooked on it of course yeah. it's, it's about all you want to do so did, did you ever play guitar to her playing the piano oh yeah we always did uh you know stuff like that it it was funny because i was into like you know hair bands and rock oh, and roll yeah. and that, stuff. that's what i was gonna ask yeah. what was your first genre that you were kind of oh the first I, I can tell you the first song i learned how to play and sing and it was every rose as it's thorn by all right yeah. <laughs> oh yes <laughs> so i'm still stuck in that genre of music that is my go-to it is. music I it's think just I've, Feel it too good. Much. It's just, I guess maybe because the memories it brings back yeah. to you, but I love it. It's, I love it too. There's a lot of great music there. There did really you, is. Did you have a mullet? Um, I did have a mullet. <laughs> Fantastic. I had a spectacular <laughs> mullet myself. So. I, I, I wouldn't I'm call mine spectacular, but I had one. You had to have one. They were the, the rage. I did. I had a mullet and a Batman t shirt and some leather boots, and yeah. I was Jeff, convinced. Very nice. Mullets are coming back. <laughs> I hear that. It's the craziest thing ever. Not for me. Ever. <laughs> It's not happening. I mean, yeah. So how has music, the music that you play kind of evolved in your life? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's a journey. Um, I would say I've gotten to be more, more myself as I get older, if that makes Mm -hmm. any sense at all. Totally totally does. Um, you know, it's real easy to try to be what everybody wants you to be. Mm-hmm. You know, especially early on when you're trying to find yourself. Right. Um, and I think once you get a little more comfortable with yourself and you finally get to a point and you're like, look, this is what I do. Mm-hmm. This is what I sound like. You know, um, I want to improve, but this may be who I am. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. you know, that's uh, that's kind of a turning point because then you can really focus in on, on that thing and, and try to, you know, try to hone it and try to make it as shiny as possible yeah. yeah that's when you become a real art i think that that applies to really anything and I, you know i'm i'm older too i'm getting older i'm 50 later this year but um that whole thing you just said about finding out you know who you are and not mm-hmm. trying to be someone else i think that applies to everything i, I think that's very that's freeing because your, your music now is probably better than it's ever been because of that i that is my opinion yeah, for yeah. sure yeah. um you know i, I feel like i I feel like I continue to improve. Um, I, it wouldn't be fun anymore if I didn't. If there weren't new things to Doing explore, it, would, yeah. it wouldn't be any real fun. So the you know the most fun for me is finding something new um, that you know or a couple of notes together that I haven't ever played before, which yeah. you would think after all these years is not possible, but it is. You know, and it happens all the time. Sure. Or if you learn from somebody that's younger. You know what I mean? Like, because we can l- learn from anybody. I love that. I, I I mentor a couple of couple of younger guitar players mm-hmm. um, in a very loose way. I, I uh-huh. wouldn't because I don't want to seem like I'm trying to take credit for anything they do. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and I always, you know, just you know, when we're sitting talking about guitar, just the rehashing of things you know, brings about, and you're trying to explain to them something will all of a sudden bring about a new idea. Yeah. I was like, Hey, look what we found here together, Uh, you know, and they get excited and then it makes me excited and we're all, we're all happy. Collaboration always brings out more. I love how you bring that, um, out though, about always learning, always kind of evolving because I always say that, like if we're not always evolving throughout our whole life, why are we even alive? Like why are we even existing? We should always be, kind of adding new things, changing our thinking a little bit, adding new, different um, ways to create music or play music. So I love that. I I do too. And I think anything that's done with enthusiasm, you're not going to keep your enthusiasm if you're you're doing the same thing all the time. But anything done with enthusiasm, it it becomes contagious, I think, when people, especially if it's art. I I think so. And that's been a big belief of mine. I I got some good advice from... uh, an old blues guy once named Floyd Miles. Floyd um, Miles. Yes. That uh, sounds like a bluesy name even. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's, he said, uh, well, it's not exactly what he said, but <laughs> this is the gist of it. He says, if you don't mean it, it don't mean nothing. Yeah. People can <laughs> people can feel that, though. I mean. He was absolutely right. And I, I was, you know, I took that piece of advice to heart. I tried to anyway. And I, yeah. I try to, anytime I'm playing, I try to make sure that I'm engaged in it. And I'm not just 
going through the motions. Even sure. even if I'm playing at a place, and this happens a lot, you know, where I, where I'm feel like I'm just sort of ambient sounds uh, yeah. that are going on while yeah. people are doing their thing. Um, I still try to stay engaged, with, at least with myself at that point, sure. because there's going to be a, somebody's going to turn around and look at me at some exactly. point. Exactly. Yeah. I was going to say, there's always that one, even if it's everybody else is not paying attention, there's that one person that just loves music yeah. or, or just appreciates the talent up on the stage that is going to be paying attention exactly. and listening. Or, or a certain song you, you play, even if it's one of your own, there's something when it catches. That's how I am. Like mm-hmm. there can be music, but I could be in the middle of talking to you and be like, oh, wait, wait and want to hear uh-huh. because sure. it, it just caught me somehow. You exactly. Know? And, and that's when you want to not you know, that's when you want to be good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you need to be at that moment, you know, <laughs> that you might've just caught yourself a $5 tip, you know, yeah. because yeah. you look like you were just sort of, you know, going through the motions. Yeah. Right, or right. like I say, you never know who's listening, who's watching. Like you just never know yeah. what that moment is going to bring. I so. totally agree. Over the years, I'm assuming that your influences have changed quite a bit too. You said, you oh, know, yeah. you were into the, the 80s hair bands. Absolutely. I, I loved like all the shredder guitar players, oh, yeah, you me know, too. Steve Vai and Eddie Van Halen oh, yeah. and uh, Joe Satriani, Eric Johnson. Eric Johnson's still a big, huge influence of, of mine. Um, you know, and as I, I grew, I kind of gra- gravitated like really heavily towards blues and R&B for, for quite some time, actually. Um and then I kind of got back to sort of, then I just sort of started taking a little bit of everything. Yeah. You know, that's the, cool. Yeah. It up. These, yeah. these days, if I'm listening to music just for what I want to listen to for not any work purpose whatsoever, yeah. it's, it's usually like, uh, it's usually jazz or classical or, you know, bluegrass. I love bluegrass. Very nice. Um, Isn't it funny how that, what, like I was a hardcore eighties rock, big hair, jean jacket, and I catch myself listening to jazz sometimes around here. There's yeah something about we it. We do that have is, that smooth. We have like a smooth jazz station. Uh, it's station like decompression is, music or something. It really <laughs> is. It's just yeah. Just put that music on. Like I well, had a long day. You know, jazz. I'm kind of you know not to get in my soapbox here, but jazz is such a great art form that is so uniquely American. You know, mm-hmm. and I it's huh. it's really like American music. If you look at it, especially from like you know 1900 to to now, and look at the evolution and all the influences of world music and what it has become, nowhere else on the planet is there anything like that. Yeah, like you know, jazz, so like jazz, or yeah. like like rock and roll, or and it was all you know here, here, and it's all because all these people came here and yeah. brought little bits of music with them. Like if you listen to bluegrass you'll find it's super closely related to like celtic fiddle tunes and things like that yeah, if you that, listen that, to it side oh, wow. by side it, it's it you know some of it is identical and that's because the history of it these people that's brought that learned. to the appalachian mm-hmm. mountains and that became bluegrass you wow know, mixed, mixed with other things so i, I get you know i'm it's amazing to me when I when I look at that sort of thing. So, did you go to school for that to did to study like music theory or anything like that? No, I I had a couple of uh, really good guitar teachers briefly early on, mm-hmm. um, who gave me a a good like hard push. Yeah. In in in, in, in some directions, and then I didn't really like study music again until honestly until about ten years ago. Oh wow! I was out, you know playing in bars, you know, rocking yeah. and rolling, you know, mm-hmm. I don't need to study music. Um, <laughs> I can play it. I, I can play this song, it. you know, give me another shot. Um, <laughs> you know, and then I finally got, I got to a point where I just felt like I wasn't making any forward progress. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I went and actually uh, took a couple of lessons from a jazz professor friend of mine. Uh, he lives here in town. His name is uh, Bobby Coble. He's a massively talented guitar player. Uh, and, uh, he just sort of, he just sort of gave me a couple of pushes in the right direction yeah. too. Basically what he taught me in about two lessons was like, look, there's no magic wand here, man. You're going to have to do some work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so I was like, okay, I'll do the work. So I went and grudgingly did some work, you know. And, I bet uh, when you do that though, and then you hear what you play, you're like, wow, this actually is making a difference. It uh, takes a while, man. It's, it takes so much practice. It, it I always say it, there's never any place like the gig for knowing what you can do or can't do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And cause you're a trial by fire at that point. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's no, there's no going backwards, you know, and what you might've done at your home while you're, you know, ripping yeah. up, and, you know, with your little, 
and your comfort zone. It, and then you try to do that in the gig. And you're like, I can't hear myself. I don't, I, nothing's going right. What's <laughs> everything? I'm <laughs> right. freaking out, you know? Oh my yeah. God. I have been there. I've yeah. been there when somebody missed the turn in the song. Oh yeah. And then you're trying to figure out how, especially if you have an audience that's paying close attention. <laughs> Get back to you're, it, am, are we going to do a big ridiculous drum roll? <laughs> Is somebody going to do the guitar up and back? There? How do we know when to change? I'm sure you've been through all that. It happened to me the other day on my uh, solo shows. I do some looping. Sure. And, um, that's very cool to me being able to manage that. Yeah, it's fun. Um, and, but sometimes, you know, things inevitably happen. Sure. Okay. Playing, wait, stop. Uh, yes. What's looping? <laughs> Okay, good question. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so looping is basically, it's a device, So and my guitar is plugged into it. Okay. And um, essentially what it allows me to do, like if I if I record a couple of chords on my guitar, mm-hmm. you know, bang, ding, 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 I'll record that or like record basically four beats of it. One, two, three, four. All right. What the looper does is records that and then plays it in a loop so that it sounds like it's ongoing uh, another oh, guitar so okay. it's like so another guitar you played it but it's you're just it's almost like you had a guitar a sitting rhythm next guitarist, to you. Yeah. oh that's cool yeah and then i do some uh, like hit my guitar and do some percussion elements and stuff <laughs> oh neat on top of it on yeah. top of it and it, it oh. get, you know it gives you the ability to it just oh, it see? basically entertains me yeah, <laughs> I know, but we but, needed but, to explain but, that because but, I didn't know yeah, what it no, was. So I know there's people listening that's like, that's what the hell is That's a I movie, it. Looper. It, but it fills the sound. <laughs> I feel like it fills the sound because I've seen like the single guy playing at events and without a band and it fills the sound. Like it feels like a rhythm guitar and a lead guitar on top of it. And it, That's really cool. It does. I, yeah. I do a, a lot of improv lead stuff on my solo show. So it gives me the opportunity to do that. Sure. You know, w- without having to... Uh, try to play other guitar parts at the same time, which is uh, crazy, super cool. But yeah. and it, you know, I was I can do a little bit of that, but you know, it's just like I said, it entertains me. I yeah. think more than anything. Else. I get more it. Than, so you said solo show. So you yes. play with a band or another I do um, guitarist? Have a, I do have a band. Um, I have a three piece band called the Defenders of Daisies. The Defenders of Daisies. Yes, oh, that is right. a cool band name. We that are. really is. Dan's always like around the house when I say something weird. He's like, "That's my band name." <laughs> <laughs> we Defender are we are silly Daisies. silly like boys. It. Yes, uh, and we do. Um, you know, we, we kind of do songs that you might not hear other people play in our own way. Okay. Like a typical set for us would be like to do, um, you know, uh, some, you know, some Bob Marley and then mm. uh, some Elton John and then some Police and then some Michael Jackson. Oh, wow. I love it. You know, oh, very uh, solid yeah. stuff. Uh, yeah. And it's all tunes that we love and we don't even make any attempt to do it in any way Except just the way we want to do yeah. it. You yeah. Yeah. And and then we then there's like a sort of an Almond Brothers aspect to it where we go off into these long crazy jams and freak out and <laughs> yeah, fun. Yeah, just have fun. We were never meant to be like a band. We just wanted to Jam, express jam ourselves together. a little yeah. bit, you know. Okay. And cool. at Ruby Street gave us the opportunity to do that on Sunday nights. When we're still doing Sunday nights at Ruby Street with the band. So how long have you been there now? Oh my gosh, doing the band, just the band thing, probably six, seven years. Holy moly. That's awesome. Wow, um, that's great. And I've been playing at Ruby Street for 10 years. Off wow. And on, so, yeah. So, I, well, you're doing something right. Yeah. Right? I, 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 I want to go back a minute, though. So, you, sure. you went to, you took theater classes in college, right? I did. I did. It, was that the catalyst for wanting to perform professionally? Or not necessarily. No, I was I was already kind of performing at that point. Um, I kind of got sucked into it. To be honest with you, I took a Western uh, Civ course or something like that. You know, Intro mm. to Western Civilization. Right. And sounds like a class I would love. But. The, right. The theater instructor <laughs> was the one who was teaching it. Yeah. Um, so she had to do this project, and of course, I, I brought my guitar and, and did a song. Yeah. And uh, she was doing a children's production. Uh, well, I should say a play for children. Um, and she's like, I really need a guitar player to do this. She's like, you know, just, you'll get credit for the class. You don't have to pay for it. Yeah. You know, just come, oh. come do it and come play guitar in this little production I'm doing. And I'm like, okay, that sounds pretty fun. So yeah. I did. Yeah. So my part in that was I sat up on this little, you know, mock balcony and like wore a mask and played little guitar. Oh, things, cool. You know, oh, that yeah. is cool. And then from there, it kind of got 
it got into my blood a little bit and I stayed out there and just did all the theater stuff I could do for almost three years. Oh, cool. What's always with a guitar, always like a music part? I, well, I did a lot of music. I, I played a lot of piano too. And I did yeah. a lot of, uh, playing piano, accompanying people when they sang. Because it seems like every time anybody had a project due, they're like, I'm going to sing a song, but I need somebody to play piano. Will you please play this song? Like, oh, yeah. yeah so I and that gave it. you the credit, too. Right? Well, it was great experience. Yeah. Um, you know, working with a lot of different people and um, just acting in general, um, which is incredibly, incredibly difficult to do mm. well. Yeah. yeah. I would say. It's not hard to, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not hard to act a fool. I but. did some <laughs> acting the other night. Acting a fool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll show you pictures after we're done. I believe of my costume. We've all done it. <laughs> and my character. I'll tell you all about the character. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, that's going to be a private joke for those of yes, you listening. Yes, private joke. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so we saw a little YouTube clip of you, and I guess it's it's the guys that you play with at Ruby Street. Uh, it's possible. Yeah. Um, Very well produced. Somebody was moving a camera around. Yeah. I'm all into that aspect of I it, know. too. I, mean, it was, I don't even know. Yeah. You're like, it hey, was... when, when did that happen? But do you have a space in your home that, where you record? Do you record your own music? Do you go to a studio? Like, how do you I, work that? I generally, I have a small little studio at the house, but I mostly do there is, it's, it's sort of my little laboratory, you know, okay. and I, I work on stuff and, uh, you know, just mock up things. And then if there's something I'm really serious about doing, um, then I would go to my friend Bobby Croft's studio. Okay. Uh, and uh, is that something local? Uh, he's in uh, he's in Sorrento as well. Oh, really? Yes. So he, he has his own little studio set up for recording. He has quite a large, extensive oh, studio. Oh, yes. fancy! Uh, it is. It's it, actually you would not believe. Uh, I mean, it's probably one of the better studios in in the state, and just in terms of uh, his ability to get great sounds. Oh, wow. Um, there's places that are certainly bigger. Yeah. Um, but, but he's built it in a way to where the acoustics in there is really good. Oh yes. Am yes. I saying the right words? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a fully, <laughs> fu- it's a full on professional deal. So, Oh, cool. Yeah. And does he do like he, he, um, what, what is it? What am I trying to say? He records for other like, musicians and stuff. He records lots of bands in the okay. state. Um, lots of people. He's super busy so right now. So that's his profession. That's what he does. That's what he does. Bobby okay. is uh, also. Uh, I have basically. I have two different bass players in the Defenders of Daisies. Defenders the original guy is a guy yeah. named Carl Cleaver. Uh, the drummer is a fellow named Matt Kent, and uh, Bobby plays bass on the nights that Carl wants. Carl sort of semi-retired from the band. Okay. So, so his, when he's in the mood, he's coming he out. He plays two in. dates a month. He calls it his bag boy gigs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I you love still got to get that creative juice flowing, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Now, um, so not every musician is a songwriter, right? Not Very every true. songwriter yeah. is a musician. I mean, to a certain effect, but... Or no, some, song, some, some performers have all their stuff written for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, it's very much a huge talent, I think, when you can do both. When did you start writing or when did you figure out, oh, I'm pretty good at this and putting putting the music with the words as well? I started Shout writing pretty bit. early. Um, I started writing not long after I, basically when I was, you know, proficient enough to like, you know, write a two or three chord song, I started yeah. writing songs. Um, cool. Cool. It just seemed to be, I don't want to say it was easy, but it was, uh, it just seemed to make sense to do it. You know, yeah. I, I it, it wasn't really like a huh. conscious decision. I just started doing it. Was that part of the draw, you think? It seemed, I'm a, a writer, like I'm a novelist, but yeah. writing the songs to me seems like it would be part of the draw to want to perform it even. It, oh, it definitely was, you know, I mean, especially when you're young and, and you're, uh, and it's just, you know, exploding out of you, yeah. you know, and you haven't had time to become too self-critical yet. Yeah. So, um, so you, pr- that's, isn't that so funny? It's yeah, like yeah. You're, you're free. You're free. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was, I wish I could get back mentally to that spot. Yeah. You know, I'd be, I'd have 8 million albums out right yeah. now. If I did. <laughs> now, do you write for other people as well? Or do you, you keep your, um, songs for yourself? I have not written specifically for other people outside of just being, uh, a voice in a room, okay. uh, you know, maybe to help with a chord change or something like that, gotcha. you know. Um, 
but uh, I, I don't know. I get, songwriting is very personal to me, so I, I have, would have a hard time. That's what I would think. Giving it you, away, writing. Not, yeah, I would actually. I would love. I love to hear people cover my songs. Yeah. Um, so like, I go. I love it when anytime I hear somebody cover something I've written. Cool. Um, I feel like it's a great compliment. But you want to do it first. You want it to be your song. I just couldn't write from the aspect, from the point of view of anybody oh, else. Oh, I get yeah. that would be that you know that. So like try, and that's exactly the way I would think about it. Is yeah. like you know, if I'm writing a song for my friend here, what would they think about it? And then I would it would get diluted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that kind of makes sense to me though, with being a songwriter and musician. You, it's like your baby, kind of like yeah. this is mine. Whereas somebody who's just a songwriter, they really don't have that um, the musician side to them. They're like, I just want somebody, I need somebody that can pull this off. Yeah. I think what it is, I think people who sing songs and, and don't write their own music, they look at songs they're going to sing just like you would as a song that you hear on the radio and like. You know, mm, if it's something yeah. they relate to strongly, yeah. then they're going to be okay. able to put their, yeah, you know, what yeah. they have into it, you know, so. That's why you hear stories of like people, um, oh, well, so-and-so was supposed to sing this song, but this artist took it instead and you're like, yeah, I couldn't even imagine the other person doing it. Yeah. I think it's genre specific too, because like the pop rock kind of stuff that, that maybe that you're thinking of, maybe Mm -hmm. I know that some of those performers have amazing voices, amazing performance ability on stage, but they'll tell you they can't write a song and that's what they need a songwriter. for Yeah. But I get what you're saying, Jeff, that the way I understand what you're saying is it's, your story. So you're okay with someone else singing your story, but sure. it's always going to be your story, not their story. Right. That's like just, that. and it's just the way I have to, I, that yeah. I have to I write. I totally get that. Yeah. 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 That's a, that's, um, that's interesting to know. Cause I, I would think every musician is a little different with that. You know what I mean? Everybody but has a different process yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's like any artist. Yeah, for sure. I've um, never written a song. Well, there's always time. <laughs> never say never. Um, so you mentioned a place called what was it called Ruby Street? Ruby Street Grill, yeah. mm-hmm. Tav- that- Tavares, Florida. That's okay. probably my that's probably my home home base. I, I do my solo thing there every Wednesday night, and uh, the band, the Defenders of Daisies, plays every Sunday night. Uh, we also host uh, an open mic night on the first. Oh, cool! The first Sunday of every month. Oh wow! So First people Sunday come up the with month. their own people instruments. People come and up their own with music. their own with their own instruments, and um, they play along with us, or they play by themselves, and we just jam and have, oh, cool. have a good time. And it's like um, that. my son actually did that one time up there. Did really? really, my son Logan went up and played drums. I it I don't think it was you guys. There was a younger kid on a guitar, uh, or no, maybe he was the drummer. It was years ago. Randy probably has a the video, video or of something. it. Yeah. I he love did. that you guys he got it. right up there. He has no fear. That's awesome. <laughs> but that reminds me of, you know, you said you play with them. It reminds me of that place in Universal where you can get up and sing your song. You have a real band behind you. Sure. So if you have your own I music. I have done that. I know you have. <laughs> but that, that, that's, uh, that's got to be a thrill for you guys and for a would be performer just to oh, kind of yeah. get their toe in the water and see if it's, they're any good at it. It's fun. And we've, we have, um, we have like start. We've helped a lot of young players, you know. Sort of, get, yeah. it's a good place for them to come because it's no pressure. Yeah, they don't have to worry about knowing forty songs to right. play a, a gig. You know, they can yeah. come and and know you know four or five standard songs. They have a good time doing it and help. It helps them get their confidence. Yeah, yeah. I it's love probably a that. safe space for them to kind of flow yeah. up. If they it do. is, we had it's a, a young, family environment. It, there. We just yeah. had it last night, and we had a young guy, like a sixteen-year-old uh, guy, guitar player. Um, who you know brought his own tracks and uh, just played along, you know, totally instrumental, completely. And he was kind of a, a shredder guy, you know. Yeah. And uh, he did his thing. He did about three songs, and uh, everybody loved it. They went crazy. So he he really got a good, you know. I think it was good for him. His yeah. confidence boosted. Yeah. He probably went home and wrote two more songs. Probably, yeah. <laughs> or at the cool. very least, he'll keep doing it. You know, he need, the encouragement is good. So, how have you guys been doing down there since the Dora Queen? Is that what it is? It's called the oh, Dora, the Dora Queen, Queen, yes. Right? I play on the Dora Queen from time to time as well. Yeah. What is uh, that? So the Dora Queen is... Um, a boat? Remember, it's the boat that um, a girl I went to school with, Brandy... Uh, what was her maiden name? Vermeulen was her maiden name. Vermeulen. Yes. Um, she was younger than... She was younger than me, but um, her and her husband started this like, you know, like a, a little... Uh, what it's like an old steam it's a paddle boat like a dinner boat kind of thing it's sort of yeah it's a it's it's a paddle boat it's not the paddle boat doesn't actually do 
the paddle yeah. doesn't actually do anything. It's, it's for got an engine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's for looks. But it's uh, it's got two levels. There's a uh, inside level that's lower, and it's it's not really a, like a dinner place. They they do some light appetizers, and mm-hmm. they have a full bar. Yeah, and it's a two hour cruise. Yeah, um, oh, it sounds amazing. Running. I yeah. love those. I've done it uh, four or five times now, yeah. and um, it's really beautiful. Everybody has a nice time. I mean, it's beautiful environment. Yeah. Sure. Sun setting, music, yeah. oh, drinks. Yeah. I mean, can't go wrong. <laughs> it's kind yeah. of a no brainer. Oh, I love that you've done that. That is awesome. So Absolutely. You've played at Outriggers too. I thought I read on your site. Uh, yeah, actually, I have not played there yet. Oh, you're getting uh, ready I, I'm to. I'm going to be playing there in March. Um, my uh, A good friend of mine uh, uh, who used to book me in another place in New Smyrna uh, is now booking for them, so he called me. Well, we know the owners of that place. Uh, they're oh. good friends of ours. So we'll yeah. have them talk after the show or whatever. But they also yeah. own Wakaiva Island out here. Bill and Mary, they've been on the show. And, oh, uh, awesome. And, have you uh, played Wakaiva Island? I have not. Oh, see. Well, there's another connection. We another connection. For sure. He's like, my calendar's booked. <laughs> yeah, I, your I, calendar I, is booked. You don't, you I don't looked at your calendar, dude. I, I did see your calendar. You don't need the connections, but you never it's, know. I would like a day busy. off. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I'm always looking for a new place to see if I fit in somewhere. So. Yeah. 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 Just change the scenery and stuff. But you've got a pretty uh, uh, versatile, uh, I mean, we kind of thumbed through your calendar on your website. You yeah. are a... Uh, Definitely a full time musician. You've done, sure. um, you do Lake Ridge Winery. I can't I get that word out. Yeah. That, Lake Ridge. Lake Ridge Winery. It is. It's a do little it. bit of a tongue you do twister. It. Whatever. Lake, I can't do it too fast. Lake Ridge Winery. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm leave that to, one in there. I'm afraid to say it. Now. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's really weird when you go to say it. Lake Ridge Winery. There you, you go. Gotta do it you got fast. it real fast. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so you do some of the festivals there. I do. I've been doing um, since they've changed things up a little bit since uh, COVID and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, they started doing events where basically they just been having uh, singles and duos out on the main stage there, yeah. and uh, you know they still do their events and everything. But this is sort of a thing they've been doing on the weekends. Uh, I've done a couple of them. Um, and they're fantastic. They're great. What a beautiful environment. And we should go back. We love that place. We haven't yeah. been since COVID. You should. It's it, it, There's lots of space outside. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you could just sit away from everyone. Absolutely. You, you can be, you know, 15 feet away from everybody if yeah. you wish. Yeah. 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 There's, you just bring a little blanket. We've been out there. I've been out there with Logan before with the... Um, the wine stomping where they did all that. The grapes. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's very yeah. cool. I took my kids to do it that. It was yeah. fun. How many kids do you have? I have two kids. They are 14 and 16 now. Oh, right. And yeah, they're yeah. Ginormous. They're huge. Yeah. But boys? I have a boy and a girl. All right. Uh, my girl is Chelsea. She's my oldest. And uh, my son, Aiden, he's my youngest. And uh, they are magnificent kids. I don't know what I did <laughs> to get so lucky, but they're both, you know, Oh, that's great we to have hear. A, we have a wonderful time. I, Are they going to... Uh, well, that's giving away too much information. I'm like, you live in Mount Plymouth, right? I do. Did you grow up in Mount Plymouth? I did not. No, I did not live there until about 11 years years oh, ago. okay. Um, I was mostly like in Mount Dora, and then I spent a, a number of years in Eustace. Uh, okay. You know, so Mount Dora, outlying areas. All right, yeah. all right. Because I, I grew up in Mount Plymouth. My uh, my mom lives right. out that way. Yeah, so I'm out there once in a while. But yeah, it's growing it. so much. It, it, Every it time is. I drive through there, I'm like, "There's houses going on the golf course. What oh, is yeah. going on?" Oh, yeah. Same way with Popka. I mean, I can I sound like an old man, but I remember telling the kids, "This used to be a dirt road. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. now it's like four lanes." Yeah, 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 I yeah. do those stories with my kids. <laughs> <laughs> I used to ride my bike through the woods right here. We used to run through those these gorgeous. sprinklers on the golf course. Oh, yeah. So, so Jeff, times. you have a new album on the way. Do you have a release date set yet for it? I, I don't, but uh, it's going to be pretty It's going to be pretty swift. This, this new album is uh, going to be basically, it's very simple production. It's going to be me and my acoustic guitar oh, and cool. whatever... Whatever I do in that situation is what what it's going to be. Nice. Um, I'm going to rehash some old songs. It, it's not so much of a uh, of a project, you know, that is going to be all new. There, I'm going to try mm-hmm. to add some new material if I can uh, get anything finished. Um, <laughs> Something will come to you. You're on your own timeline. You know? Yeah. Know? Honestly, this is an album for my wife um, because oh, nice. although she's been a fan of you know all of my work and everything. What she's always told me, she's like, I just like it when you're just you and an acoustic guitar. And yeah. She said, you should do an album like that. 
And of course, you know, I, I'm like unplugged or something. Uh, you know, I'm like, no, man, we need strings and organs and drums and <laughs> guitars and screaming vocals in a choir. Yeah. You know, and she's like, you don't need all that. And I'm, you know, and of course, I'm in that mode, you know, uh-huh. production mode. And I'm like, no, we must have it. Yeah. <laughs> so do you play? So you play the piano. I do. Is there any other instruments you dabble in? Um, I, I guitar is always is my primary. Yeah. Instrument. It, Anybody who's heard me play piano will certainly attest to that. Uh, p- piano is sort of. Uh, I love the piano. You know, I, I wouldn't ever take like a gig as a as a professional keyboard player. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, because I know good keyboard players, and I wouldn't yeah. go take their gig. But um, I, I enjoy it a lot, and um, it helps me to write different things. I think that's what they say: is that knowing the keyboard, yeah, um, is like a must for for. Getting it, the right really sound, is. or I, I don't know what it's for, but well, it's. I, well, I remember, I remember back in the '80s watching like behind the scenes of a lot of that '80s rock. Even some of the producers would play piano for all these heavy rock guys just to show them the direction the song could go. I remember like the sure. making the Metallica and Bob Rock playing a piano, and it, you know, it, it still stirs the direction of the song and the okay. key that it's going to be in and all that. Do you use it that way? I I use it just because. Um, there's just different, I, it's easier to stack the notes together sometimes on a piano uh. than on, on a guitar. Playing guitar is not a natural act. I mean, you're pressing your little sensitive fingertips I, I against tried to learn it. hard, oh. it's, hard strings yes. to under tension is ridiculous. And your fingers are in positions that they don't want to be in. It, exactly. Be so, so sometimes there's some notes that I want to get together, you know, and I want to see how they sound together and it's just easier to grab them on the piano, yeah. you know, and, uh, to be honest with you, I just because it's a different instrument, it just sounds different. So you know, there's there could be a group of chords that sound great on piano that don't sound so great on oh, guitar. I, I didn't realize. I mean, that. not. I mean, it's still the same chords, but mm-hmm. put together, you know, on the piano, it's slightly different than it is. Yeah, on so the it's guitar. It's a different sound altogether. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, it'd be like trying to play. Uh, Billy Joel once said, you know, like trying to play, you know, Jimi Hendrix on piano. It doesn't work on piano. Yeah. Man. You yeah. Get all right Even if you get yeah. all the right notes, it's True. not going to be Hendrix, yeah. you know. But then again, it's you can't play, you know, Rachmaninoff concertos on guitar yeah, either. True. So, I mean, I mean, there maybe there's some people who can do that, but I'm not one of them. Yeah, not the same vibe either way. <laughs> exactly. So, oh, I, I thought, I just thought of something I wanted to ask about when you first started performing, like not including like, a high school um, talent show or anything, but like, what was your first gig that you ever had? Okay. This is an easy one. I can answer this. Um, So I, uh, you know, I'd done some playing in high school, in high school with some garage bands and, you Mm -hmm. know, done a few of those little things here and there. Um, I started going downtown Mount Dora to uh, Eduardo's. Oh yeah. I remember that. Eduardo's station it was called back in those days. And they had a jam night every Sunday night, cool. um, hosted by a good friend of mine, a f- fellow named Mark Z, um, who he and I actually wound up playing together and still play together um, for 20 years. That's you know? the band we read about on your on your site. There's yes. A, there's a cool band name you guys had. What was the name? You had a name for just the two of you, didn't you? Oh, well, we had also had a five-piece band. We've oh, had, there's was? been so many projects. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, Mark I'll send Z, you the itemized list Mark, later. Mark Z and I had a duo, um, and we were just Mark and Jeff. Oh, but okay. We were also part of a five-piece band called Maka Gray. That's the one, yeah, Maka yeah. Gray. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so, your first gig, yeah. Yes, did. okay, yeah, first gig. So they had a jam night there. I was bagging groceries at the Logo Albertsons. That was my job. Okay. And um, You're like, boring. I had seen <laughs> I had seen this guy, Mark Z, hosting the jam night. And he happened to come through my line one day. And I said, hey, man, how does somebody go about jamming at your jam night? You know, do you have to, what do you have to do to do that? You have to audition? And he's like, no, man, you just bring a guitar and show up. And I was like, well, okay. Um, so I went over there and mm-hmm. um, I, I jammed. And, um, you know, everybody's looking at me, you know, I'm this young kid and everything. I was going like to ask that. if yeah. you were stressed out the first time. Oh, yeah. And I think, I can't remember what I played, but I played something, you know, that was right up everybody's alley it, because it was something older, like a classic rock thing. Yeah. Everybody, everybody thought I was going to, you know, be doing headbangers. Because you got to kind of look that. at your audience, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. But I think I, I don't even. I wish I could remember what I played. 
I can't remember. So I played a few songs and everybody just was going crazy because I'm this young little kid yeah. playing songs. How and everything. old were you? I was 17. Oh, wow. At the time. So I, I walked off the stage and everything like that. And the manager, Vicky, pulls me aside. She goes, you're good. And I said, well, thanks. She says, would you like to play some here? Maybe a couple of Wednesday nights here and there throughout, you know, maybe twice a month. And I said, I would, do you mean like play here for money? And she was like, yeah, play, play a gig here. And I was like, well, yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> How cool is that? The first time you ever play out somewhere, they ask you that. Wow. That's not a common thing that happens. No, this, it was crazy. So she was like, but look, here's the deal. How old are you? I said, I'm 17. She's like, look, are you still in school? I said, yes, I'm still in school. She said, you have to bring me your report card. Oh, she says, I, I don't, love her. I don't care if you're getting D's, but you have to be going to school and you have to graduate. At the minute that you're not in school anymore, you're not, you don't have a gig. Wow. And that is awesome. Did, so, you, did you go quit Albertsons the next day? Instantaneously. <laughs> I went home and I went home and quit once, and then just to make sure, I called and back you and quit again. Sure. I need to let you know, I'm a professional musician I now. Really I will not be back there. Rock and roll star. Oh, I love oh it. Oh my god, that is amazing. That is a great. Because that's story. what I would have done. I swear, that's true. That's so that funny. is great. So I have one more question before you're going to play a song for us, right? Sure. Excellent. That would be great. Do you have a name for that new album that's coming up? Are you still working on it? I don't. I will, I will work on it until 30 seconds before the release, I'm sure. And, oh, yeah, nice. yeah, probably. Yeah. And it's it's still, it's very much in its sort of conceptual stage, but I'm just trying to keep it simple. And, yeah. uh, you know, I think this is something. I've had other people who's always said, you know, we just like your, we like hearing your original songs when just you do it, you know, yourself. Yeah. And, I, and so this is kind of, I'm trying to listen to my, my fan your base, fan base. Yeah. and try, trying to give them something. And your that wife, they, which is probably your biggest fan. Absolutely. And and hardest, toughest critic. Okay. I mean, she initially she might have been a little moony eyed and everything because then you know, that's all that's gone. Uh uh-uh, no 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 no. <laughs> Anymore it's like that's that's like no 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 that's terrible. No. You need that though. I mean <laughs> yeah. that's how she is with me. That when you know you have somebody that's honest with you, it's a that's the go-to person. She keeps me grounded and she's kept me in this business. Um, cause I've been ready oh. to quit hundreds of times. And she's the one who always says, you're not going to be happy if you quit. Mm-hmm. You're going to be miserable. Yeah. This is what you do. You yeah. just got to stick it out. And yeah. So there's going to be bumpy times. Sure. It's going to happen. Like, like any job. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. But being able to do what it's you great love to have as a that. living, that is pretty awesome. And to I, have that support. That's you have to have that support. You do. There's a yeah. lot of guys who, who don't have that support, and uh, there's some, you know, a lot of times that somebody going out to play music in a bar, you know, it can be a point of contention in relationships. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. um, you know, I've seen a lot of very talented guys who, have, you know, don't play anymore at all, you know, don't even because of that, don't even touch their instruments just because it's a point of con- which is really a shame because, mm. yeah. to be honest with you, it's not really what anybody is there for. Yeah. Specifically. <laughs> Maybe when you're like, yeah, 21. Or, uh, I mean, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like in the early years. But yeah, once you once that that is your profession, you're there to entertain and to share your music. Absolutely. And everybody wants to party and have a good time, you know. But, you know, usually the reason that you came there in the first place was to play and to try to play good and have, yeah. and have that too. Yeah. That yeah. was a challenge I always had when it's everyone's partying too much in the band. I'm sure... It, Anybody's ever been in a band has been through that where you're mm-hmm. like, oh, this, this isn't going to work out. <laughs> I had so many of those times where it's like, we're going to need, we need 30 episodes for all the different various <laughs> incarnations of that that I've gone through. Yeah. And, an, and another hundred episodes just from, just to, me to tell the stories that I've done. Oh, so. I bet. Oh my gosh. Which, well, which well, we probably couldn't share. Jeff, thank you so much for sitting with us tonight. <laughs> we're excited to hear it. a song from you. And I, I, I'd really like to make plans to come see you play somewhere. Yeah. Where are you play next? Uh, let's see. I will be, uh, what is today? Today, uh, Monday, is Monday. Okay. So tomorrow, it's your only day off, right? Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> tomorrow night I'm in New Smyrna beach at, uh, Norwood's Treehouse. Oh, I've been there. Oh, they have the best food ever. Cool. Spectacular place. Ever. I've been playing there a while. I love being there. Um, and then Wednesday night, as always, I will be at, uh, Ruby street grill Thursday night. Uh, every Thursday night I am at, uh, olive branch in Mount Dora. Olive branch. I've not been there. Wonderful. 
Mediterranean and Italian food. Oh, and Mediterranean is my favorite. Okay, you we're going to look at your calendar. That's on your yeah. website, isn't it? It is. Early? Calendar is always on the website. All right, so I'm going to yeah. put a link in the show notes for those of you listening where you can find out where you can see Jeff next. Absolutely. And uh, maybe send him a message and ask him what the title of his new album is going to be. Or give me a suggestion. Yeah. Oh, that's a good <laughs> oh, one, too. Do you take requests when you're like, in, when you have an audience out in front of you, you take requests, too? Absolutely, I take requests. Absolutely, yeah. Or just yeah, put there. a tip in there. Maybe That's request it. you better put a tip in there. There's an old old joke. There's an old joke among musicians. They said, you know, uh, if you would like to hear anything, just write it on the back of a twenty dollar bill and send it on. That's up. right. Yeah, <laughs> that's only fair. It's only that, fair. That's great. It's a good way to wrap up. Thank you very much again, Jeff. Thank you for having me. And guys, we're going to hear a live song here from Jeff over the break, and then Angie and I will be right back. Hey, this is Jeff Whitfield, and I'm going to play a song for you now. This is a song I wrote. Uh, this is called Bag of Bones, and this song is kind of about being good, but not too good. Skeletons in my closet, and baby, it's for sure. I got a bag of bones in my trussel drawer. I'm crazy by my baby, she made me feel about six foot ten. I'm crazy about my baby, she gonna love me to the end. I didn't know how to love you, baby, now I know for sure. I got a bag of bones in my trussel drawer. Yes, I do. Bridge, y'all. I'm crazy about my baby in the bluest eyes I ever saw. Crazy by my baby, she love me, stinky feet and all. There's no skeletons in my closet, and baby, it's for sure. I've got a bag of bones. Bag of bones, I got a bag. Of bones in my trussel trove. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, baby, what a day for a daydream, baby.
Hey guys, welcome back, and we hope you enjoyed that interview with Jeff Whitfield and that song that he played for us during the break. Jeff decided to stay to help us wrap up the show. Oh my god, I'm here. I'm staying. Look I'm never us. leaving. We haven't had this in forever. I it's know. amazing. I know. <laughs> Literally since like episode. It's going to give two. me. It's going to give me an idea of wanting to do this for all of them from now on. Settle down. <laughs> Settle down, now, buddy. <laughs> Settle down. No. It's actually, it's cool. You know yeah. what I mean? Because we have, we just talked to Jeff about, we've changed up the format a few different times. Yep. Um, and it used to be where people would sit with us when we did the intro. Yep. You know, like our little chatting at the beginning. And now we do a little different. So, yeah. and now we have a guest yeah. during the close. We're talking about evolving, right? The show is evolving. Evolving. evolving That's is good. right. And I just, the only thing I really wanted to mention this week is if um, people are looking for things to do in February, you know, it's Valentine's Day. So, of course, people are going to be doing stuff yep. on that day. But um, our um, friends at Wakaiva Island, we love Wakaiva Island. We do. Every year they do this thing called the Paint Out. And so they invite um, artists from all over. I mean, all over the country, the world, and they come and they do like landscape paintings the oh. whole week. And you can come and watch the painters set up in different locations. Some of them take like kayaks or canoes down the river and will set up and paint I love this. something. It is the coolest thing. I'm a huge Bob Ross fan. This sounds like heaven. It totally, oh. this will be right up your alley then. Seriously. <laughs> Jeff, they go down to different parts of the river and just pick a spot ah. and then they paint it. They're how, just yeah. painting a spot how on the cool river. Is that? It's yeah. the most awesome thing I've ever heard. It, it is really cool. And it's just the whole week. It goes from the 21st, I think it goes all the way through the 29th, which is the, um, the, um, the gala. That yeah. they do. So the proceeds for that go to a couple different organizations. Right. Um, keep some, keep some, it'll beautiful. Yep. Um, and yeah, the proceeds from that go to there on the gala. They have tickets that you, you know, you get some drinks, you get some food, you know, entertainment, and then they do bidding on the actual paintings. I love so that. So how cool is that? And I some of them you can just buy right then. I may have to go to this. Yeah, it's really cool. So it really is. Um, we definitely want you guys to check that out. I mean, like you said, you don't have to do the gala if you don't want to. You can literally just go during the week and when watch they them started paint. on the twenty first. Yeah. They just watch them wherever they're set up. They oh. encourage it. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it sounds like the most peaceful Maybe way. Maybe you can get in the picture too. Be like, <laughs> wait a minute. It's the neatest <laughs> idea. I love it. I love do you it. Need just a model. Have- yeah. Having some drinks and watching them paint, it's great. I am telling you, it's um, it's a really cool thing they do every year. And um, we love supporting them because they really are about keeping the river clean, keeping this environment um, in its natural state. I love all of this. So we, we love what they do down there. Yeah. Excellent. So. Awesome. And the only thing I really wanted to mention was at the Wayne Dinch Performing Arts Center. So we met with Terry Siciliano a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to remind everyone that for the weekend of, uh, of Valentine's Day, they're doing their film festivals out there. That's right. The little 30 minute um, short clips or whatever that they're doing. Yeah. So they have yeah. like a comedy section or a horror section. I think there's a horror section. And that's independent. Um, that, independent films. Independent yeah. films. Yeah. But they've got, they, they'll have food out there. They'll have drinks out there. It's like a whole thing. You can go to the whole day worth of films if you want well into the night or you can go for a couple hours. So it sounds like a it. really cool thing to do for Valentine's Day. So we'll put some links in the show notes for yeah. both the paint out and the Wayne Dench I'm, I just feel center. completely not cool anymore. There's so many cool things going on that I didn't know about till I came here. I'm yeah. telling you. And you know what's cool is we, we always find this out we're like this happens in our backyard like literally so, right here you'd and be surprised in, i guess there's the, so much that goes I'm on i'm telling you jeff i was exactly like you though when we started doing this show you know we wanted to do it to sort of help charitable organizations which we still do a lot but just meeting with different people and i'm like that's here i, I like was born here there's all these things so i hear you like you right. can never be bored. Yeah. Okay, people. There's always something going on. So much to do. Yeah, there's That's so much right. to do. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the show. Of course, we know you enjoyed the show. What are we saying? You enjoyed the music. You got entertained. Make sure to check Jeff Whitfield out. He uh, Check his page out. It's jeffwhitfieldmusic.com, yeah. correct? That's it. And I know I say this all the time, but as a podcast listener or a YouTube watcher, if you're watching on YouTube or listening on any of your podcasts, players you can just scroll down and click and his website click you don't have it. to remember it and you so. know what i love that you have on your website is you have a countdown till your next gig 
I did. I can't. I love it. I, I can't say I'm responsible for that. My website designer, uh, Aaron Texter, uh, took did that. It added that a, in there. But it's I thought a great, it was a great idea. Time. It's, it's great a great idea. idea. It's like, oh my gosh, I got to get ready. Yeah. It's 30 minutes. It's kind of <laughs> like, good. I, get there. I try not to look at it. Just depresses me. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, if you have any ideas for the show or have someone that um, you think would be a good fit for the show, or if you want to be on the show, give us a call at 407-490-3899. You can also email us at feedback at fineanddangy.com. That's right. You can find us on all social media at Fine and Dangy. But we ask every episode. We really appreciate you guys. If you enjoy the show, please give it a rating. If you love the show, give it a review. And if you're crazy about the show, hit that subscribe button. Yeah, just yeah, do all three. There. <laughs> That's how do all three. Do all three. <laughs> all three is good. And as we ask every episode, we like for you to stop for just a minute and think to yourself, what are you doing to help other people in your community? And how can you help more? That's right. And that can go from a range of anything, from helping open the door, just being kind, supporting your local musicians. That's right. Um, just just really think about it each and every day. Just scale it to your life. If you've got tons of money, then donate some money. If you've just got time, <laughs> then donate your time. But help. Help your community. That's right. I love that. And also remember, at the end of each and every day, it's, it's all fine and dandy. Dang.